So, this is what we are looking at in the last class, right? Tropical summer index, and I think I gave you the formulae, I mean, the formula associated with this. This was uh, approximately one third wet bulb temperature, three fourth dry bulb temperature, two under root V, right? This is slightly more empirical, original empirical equation was slightly more elaborate, but this is good enough for our purpose. So, that is what I said is equivalent temperature of calm air at 50 percent relative humidity, which will produce same effect as the environment under consideration, right. So, you can plot it on psychrometric chart, because remember psychrometric chart has dry bulb temperature d b t here, then there are wet bulb temperature w b t here. So, since it is a function of d b t and w b t, you know T s i is a function of wet bulb temperature and dry bulb temperature d v t t d and you know we write t w and t d and velocity assume velocity equals to 0 then T s i can be for 0 velo air velocity T s i can be plotted here. So, these are the T s i values vertical T s i values are there T s i values. So, wet bulb temperature is there then T s i values you can actually plot it here right and then identify the comfort condition which would be 25 to 30 degree as I said 25 to 30 degree T s i 30 degree T s i and slightly slightly uh, tolerable is 19 to 34 right. So, 30 to 34 is warm situation which is tolerable 19 to 25 cold situation which is tolerable. So, this is how one can and one can plot them actually one can plot them right. So, this I think I have given you this expression earlier relative humidity can be you know obtained from this kind of expression this is a saturated uh, uh, saturated pressure at T d dry bulb temperature empirical equation fitted from the psychrometric charge or chart only and T p w is uh, is is basically the vapor pressure associated with wet bulb depression this is atmospheric pressure T w is the wet bulb temperature P s dash is here. So, once you find out the P s dash P w we can find out the vapor pressure corresponding to current situation P s is the vapor pressure corresponding to saturated. So, phi can be found out to find find P w you need P s dash which is given by this and this is the wet bulb depression. So, through this empirical equation you can find out the relative humidity you know first you find out P s 14.48 etcetera etcetera knowing the dry bulb temperature then you find out P s dash depending upon the wet bulb temperature right and this P w is found out knowing P s dash and wet bulb and dry bulb temperature. So, if you know dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature this atmospheric pressure you can find out P w and once you have found out P w phi can be obtained right. So, P w is the atmospheric pressure as I said. So, based on this you can actually calculate out I did not do a calculation earlier, but now you know supposing it is 25 degree centigrade or whatever 30 35 degree centigrade uh, relative humidity is 40 percent or 50 percent uh, corresponding to this uh, uh, or other wet bulb temperature is known then you can find out the relative humidity. If relative humidity and dry bulb temperature is known then it is of course, calculating it is transcendental situation you have to obtain the wet bulb temperature accordingly. So, in the psychrometric chart again now coming back the you know we can plot this T s i values and for various season for example, warm humid situation where relative humidity is very high T s i values actually you can obtain for various situation for hot dry climate because we know the range of temperature and relative humidities and we can plot and this is uh, the you know this is uh, um, another situation basically this is warm humid hot dry and this is uh, this is sorry this is hot dry situation this is cold dry situation. So, that is how one can actually identify in the psychrometric chart T s i values right and if you you know comfort zone is known for example, comfort zone is somewhere here. So, what is uncomfortable you can actually estimate. So, this is the comfort zone you know this is the comfort zone T s i comfort zone is this one 
dry bulb temperature, I mean uh, TSI value corresponding from 25 to 30 and uh, uh, relative humidity range, etc., etc., it is known. So, one can actually obtain these values in psychrometric chart. Anyway, that is that is all right. I mean, the it is okay you find out in psychrometric chart or otherwise. What we know is that comfortable situation is 25 to 30 and slightly stretchable situation is 30 to 34 and 19 to 30. So, deviation from that at any time will cause kind of discomfort. So, you can knowing the dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature and air velocity. So, your design condition should be basically maintaining deviation from TSI minimal either way right from the other right. Okay. okay. So, that is what it is that is what uh, That is what it is. So, now you can look in the next scenario. Thermal design of unconditioned building we can look into now having having understood the uh, requirement thermal requirement of an unconditioned building. Now, we can think in terms of how do we design the envelope or you know building as a whole. Internal distribution of heat is uh, is, is a secondary issue, but the internal I mean distribution from one point to another one room to another, but overall if you are looking from you know overall your envelope is the one which controls the heat gain or heat loss. Therefore, thermal design when we are talking of largely we are talking of the design of the envelope including shape orientation etcetera. So, you cannot you cannot fully design by passive means. What are passive means? I think in the beginning I said something related to passive means. Passive means are those ones which are permanently there in the building and do not consume any energy. So, for example, even though fan is an active device, but we still consider it a part of the passive device because it does not consume large energy, but air conditioners they consume a lot of energy, you need imp energy input. So, they are active de devices. So, with pure passive devices you should not you would not be able to control the condition or you know thermal condition of the space within fully. So, natural conditions I mean if I assume it to be if I assume it to be uh, you know there is a there is some sort of mean value and there is a perturbation purely sensorial is for the schematic purpose drawn. So, variation would be something like this there will be lower side and higher side natural, but the first stage of any design is actually at the urban design level you know you can modify the microclimatic situation as I talked about earlier uh, when I was talking of climate site climate I said for example, if you have a uh, uh, lot of clusters of buildings then they would have a tendency to increase the temperature because they will reduce down the uh, evaporation loss there will be ground runoff will be higher losses will be less and thermal mass of the buildings they will try to store the heat it, it can even result in what is known as urban heat urban heat climate I mean heat island you know urban heat island. So, this kind of situations could be there. Uh, so, so, in the beginning itself not only that you can also plan the buildings in such a manner that one building shades another etcetera. So, while designing the urban stage itself you can control something plantation of trees obviously increases evaporative cooling which means that relative humidity will increase, but temperature will come down. So, trees would actually bring down the temperature, but it will increase the relative humidity. So, microclimatic through microclimatic modification done in a not in haphazard manner and just by any time you do not change you know once you have decided right in the planning stage you have to look into and with sufficient flexibility of course, for future changes, but by and large you know what is likely to happen with the current knowledge current knowledge if the knowledge base changes new technology comes thing could be different, but still the flexibility would could be there in the planning stage itself. So, design urban planning can be done in such a manner that you can actually get some modification like planting tree will bring down the temperature, but increase the relative humidity spaces around the building everything put together green area, green areas and so on. So, this will reduce down the perturbation somewhat reduce down the perturbation somewhat. Then you have structural control that is your envelope design and all that structural control 
it is best if you can actually use multifunctional system. That means you have an envelope which not only provides comfort against thermal issues, temperature changes and you know climatic thermal climate, but possibly if it can be also uh, uh, coupled together to perform for structural purpose also, then it's two functional, multifunctional, you know, right? So there are there are various kind of uh, modern buildings coming in. For example, you don't have, I mean, you don't have, uh, uh, you know, you can have precast elements, uh, box element, or tunnel form of construction. You know, there are many other formworks where the concrete goes as wall as well as roof and acts monolithically for as structural element. So uh, the just just trying to give an example. Therefore. The wall itself will perform, should perform for two functions, at least structural function and also the thermal function. Might be acoustics and etc. So multifunctional will always be economical, right? Should not look in isolation. Then you have, uh, once you have done that, you have come to this. But finally, if you want to bring it to over a very small perturbation, no changes, then you need mechanical control. Then you need mechanical control. So that's your mechanical control, that's mechanical control, right? So it is, you know, it's, it's essentially uh, optimizing the deviations, naturally conditioned building, deviations from the TSI values, deviation from TSI or similar temperature, humidity, combination, you know, thermal index values. So in our case, could be deviation from TSI could be our one of the objectives. So whenever you do an op design, design is essentially optimization process. For example, structural design is minimizing the material to perform, you know, withstand the loads, forces, which in terms of stress we talk about and strain or deflection or whatever it is, some way you define. So it is usually an optimization process and thermal design is no different. So in this one, objective function or purpose, the objective is to minimize the deviation from tropical summer index or something similar, right? Deviation from the comfort condition, minimize the deviation from comfort condition in unconditioned building. If it is conditioned building, it will be minimize the thermal load. One can obviously also look into the cost part of it. Now, if you are improving the comfort, you know, minimizing the deviation from comfort conditions, then budget may be a constraint that you, you, you do not, cost should not be more than this. So in optimiz optimization process, you know, numeric or mathematical optimization process, usually you have constraint situation. Anyway, that's separate, uh, not part of this course actually. So here also optimization or somebody might minimize the total life cycle cost for energy efficient building, right? So there could be various, but there has to be some sort of cost minimization, deviation minimization or energy load building. In case of naturally conditioned building, it is deviation from the comfort condition which you would like to minimize. Now in such situation, you have something called decision variables or design variables. Decision variables are what? Which you can change and you find out their value, for example, thickness of the wall or their U value. Find out the value which will optimize your, optimize the performance, which will optimize the performance. These are called decision variables. U value of the wall or construction of the wall, etc., etc., which will actually govern U value. So you, you might have in right form, correct, you know, some form. These are called either design variables or decision variables. You, you, when you do a course on operation research uh, or, or optimization, you will come across this. So in our case, the design or decision variables are the envelope, envelope, wall, ceiling, you know, sunshades, etc., orientation, shape, window to wall area ratio or fenestration area, type of glasses. If there are shading devices, then shading devices. There would, could be n number of them. I have just listed the few main ones, right? You know, because they'll get, for example, envelope can be divided into several numbers. You know, envelope can be divided into. I mean, it would it would be uh, it would be thickness of the envelope, 
thermal conductivity of the component of the envelope layer. So each one can be decision, there can be n number. So there were large number of decision variables actually in thermal design. And we look into some thumb rule sort of thing. Actually, you want to do, you have to optimize it and use some optimization tool. Right now, we are not doing that in this class. We are just telling you how, which factors, how do they affect. For example, you want to select the envelope parameters in hot, dry, desert climate. Now, this is your comfort zone. This is your comfort zone. As I said in unconditioned building, this is the comfort zone, let us say. This is the comfort zone. Temperature, you will find that outside air temperature, actually sometime early in the morning, you know, up to 6 a.m. or so, it will be lower than the bottom of the comfort zone. That means you feel cold in the morning, those who come from desert areas. Early morning, you start feeling cold, but in the during, you know, daytime, it goes beyond the you know, it, it becomes un uncomfortable because of the warm condition. So, that is typically hot, dry, desert climate because we know diurnal variation is large. Diurnal variation is large. Now, sole air excess over it could be something like this. If it is a, you know, if it is, if it is east wall, if it is east wall, so this is east wall, this is for east wall, right, east facing wall. So, morning the sun's radiation comes in the morning. Its peak could be somewhere around 8, 10, 10 a.m. or something like that. So, if you superimpose the solar air excess, you will get something like this. So, your peak temperature or peak which you like, you know, peak will come somewhere there. But then, sometime at night, it goes below the, it becomes cold and goes below the comfort condition. So, your time lag could be something like 14 hours because this peak, the outside pattern of temperature variation is something like this. This should bring in the heat into the room when outside has become cold. So, you need large time lag, 14 hours. So, your wall thickness, east facing wall thickness typically could be something like 14 hours, but this is not, I mean this is just a way how you find it out, right. One might look into actual scenario and then find it out. So, this is for east facing wall for hot dry desert climate. For west wall, the solar excess goes somewhere there. You need much less time lag. Decrement anyway will recur same, pretty low, as low as possible. So this is for, you know, this is for uh, west facing wall. This is for actually roof. So this is more or less at the day, you know, the peak temperature and slightly peak temperature will be somewhere there, solar radiation will be slightly earlier. So, you need possibly somewhat less time lag than the west facing wall, I mean east facing wall, but slightly more than the west facing wall. So, this is how we can get some idea. This gets, so hot dry desert climate we need these because diurnal variation is very large. We, in warm humid climate really we do not need all that because the diurnal variation temperature variation is not very large. The more important thing is, more important thing is, more important thing is actually ventilation. You would like air movement to be high because relative humidity is high. So, forced evaporation from the body should be high. So, in warm humid climate, warm humid climate, natural, naturally conditioned building high ventilation. So, you need large openings, fenestration should be designed accordingly. Fenestration should be designed accordingly, large, right. So, these are some kind of guidelines, right. Oh, oh. These are some kind of guidelines. Now, orientation, how do I decide? So, this was, this was related to the wall thickness. U values are important, but uh, you see decrement and time lag is important in hot dry desert climate and uh, in uh, warm humid climate, perhaps you do not need much thickness of the wall, but what you need is lot of openings in the, uh, in the, you know, in the, in the, you know, envelope, I mean obviously not the ceiling. So, orientation, let us say I am just giving some examples actually, but if you want to do a rigorous one, 
you have to resort to an optimization procedure. But otherwise, you can get ideas, okay, typically I should be using this much for east wall, west wall, etc., etc., and accordingly, obviously, you cannot vary too much. You know, I, another analogy with respect to structural engine, structural design is normally column sizes, even though some column is taking more load, some other column is taking less load, you keep them same. You group them actually, otherwise shuttering cost will increase. The other, other implications are there. So, you cannot vary east wall or west wall, but you know this idea you got to have, so that right kind of choice you can make. Orientation if you have to do, orientation one way is to minimize summer gain minus winter gain, particularly in composite climate. When you have a severe winter and also a severe summer of the two kind. Now, why twice summer gain? Because removing heat from the space is costlier. Heating is cheaper, cooling is costlier, at least three, four times costlier than heating. Heating is heating is much easy. Directly you heat. Removing it means you do work and to remove the heat actually. So it's costlier process, right? And in this process, therefore. Well, at least a weightage factor of 2 should be taken. So, what you do? Minimize twice summer gain minus winter gain. You would like to have winter gain, right? So, the envelope should be such that or orientation should be such that it should allow for summer, lowering the summer gain, minimizing the summer gain, but then it should not block the winter gain. So, your ob objective function could be something like this. Supposing I have got an envelope of area A1, you know, with area A1 to N, N surfaces are there. Then what I do is I find out IT. IT is the intensity of radiation on total radiation on N wall multiplied by AI. Sum up, so total radiation on AI. So sum it up for all the walls. Right? Take one representative summer day and one representative winter day. This is for pure ha hand calculation. But if you have written a program, then you know you can take for many days because you will just simply put it in what you good old days used to call as do loop repetition. So you can repeat this procedure, you re repeat it. So, but hand calculation, if you are doing, take one representative summer day and one representative winter day. And then minimize twice summer gain minus winter shading minus you know winter minimize the summer gain minus the winter gain otherwise it would have. Days chosen are 16 May and 22nd December in SP 41. 16 May stands for typical summer day and 22nd uh, December this Indian condition any elsewhere it could be different. So, 16 May and 22nd December because you know the radiation is a function of the latitudes right uh, so therefore this is so check for various orientation and choose the best you can find out the areas of all the walls and corresponding radiation falling on 16th may at different times sum them up sigma this is sum sum up the total radiation falling on each surfaces multiplied by the surface area sum it up for all the as you change the orientation for example if this is your orientation or otherwise this is your orientation radiation falling onto this area would be you know multiplied by this area radiation falling onto this area multiplied by area on 16th may similarly for this case again you can find out minus that will would, would, would should have come you know that would come on 22nd december right so whichever gives you minimum summer gain minus winter gain that's what you should be choosing that's what you should be choosing right that's so that's how you can choose the orientation by simple hand hand calculation itself by simple hand calculation you can choose right so that's it okay summer gain something like this i goes from 1 to iti ai winter loss because if you have you know if you have designed it in such a manner the orientation is such that it doesn't allow winter heat to come in so, that is we are considering winter loss actually, otherwise it would have come. So, radiation falling during winter that should be minus subtracted, subtracted this minus, so this minus this, this you should minimize. Okay, then shape, 
Now, shape basically per unit volume is what you should be considering. Shape per unit volume is what you should be considering because after all the internal space should be same internal you know habitable room heights are fixed habitable room heights are fixed or any functional building for that matter the heights are generally fixed. So, uh, the shape is to do the layout in plan and total volume. So, shape is a total surface area. Now, what is relevant for us? Because if I change the shape, external surface facade surface area will change. So, what we do is total surface area per unit volume multiplied by the radiation, total external surface because supposing I, 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 I choose a cylindrical shape right height is same same or the same volume if I consider I can have a rectangular shape right. Now, cylinder will have cylindrical circular has got the least surface area. So, the radiation coming on to would be different in these two cases. So, shape will govern the heat gain again because the surface area is like, like the orientation. In fact, orientation and shape should be seen together right the combinations of orientation shape. There are cylindrical buildings, cylindrical buildings even residential buildings there are cylindrical buildings are there uh, would be you know may not be very good unless there is something else is done because it will always receive lot of radiation from west surface etcetera etcetera anyway one can see that. So, total surface area per unit volume multiplied by radiation governs the shape. Winter condition then if it is winter heat loss you want to minimize then heat loss will be given by U A C V T I A minus T O A summer this will be actually summer scenario will come to that, but supposing I, I am not bothered about heat I mean cooling I am bothered about heating in that case the heat loss is a function of inside temperature and okay. outside temperature and I would like to minimize that. Loss per unit temperature therefore, is given by this per degree temperature difference is given by this. To compare different heat you know different shapes heat loss per unit volume is looked into. So, U A because C V is nothing but N V by 3 remember C V is equals to N V by 3. So, I am just writing that. So, U A by V number of air changes divided by 3 loss per unit temperature per unit volume can be written like this. And for minimum heat loss U A by V per unit volume you know surface area less the least surface area per unit volume. So, one can consider. So, one can minimize this because N would will not be in your hand N depends upon changes so, and that will depend upon outside air velocity etcetera etcetera and related more to the opening areas. So, uh, that, that's that's you know outside we can just so if we minimize this we will have least heat loss we will have least heat loss. So, that is actually in non tropical condition that would be you know shape should be based on this shape should be based on this right. And then you can actually write it in terms of aspect ratio L by B aspect ratio is L by B L is a length this is aspect ratio L this is B length and width. So, L by B is aspect ratio and B can be related to height B can be related to beta H. So, therefore, L is equals to alpha beta H. So, volume is alpha beta square H cube beta is ratio between width and height width and height. So, everything is expressed in terms of height actually na? everything is expressed. So, volume you can express in terms of height and surface area also you can express in terms of height and heights are generally you know like that is that is I mean not really our concern because they will remain by and large same. So, you can actually cube has the best surface you know cube amongst the rectangular parallel 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 sort of shape 
cube has a least surface area to volume ratio right cube has a least surface area to volume ratio i am leaving out sphere because buildings are unlikely to be sphere hence most efficient is v equals to h0 cube v h0 cube had it been h0 cube that would have been the most efficient and for identical volume i can just say h0 cube so h0 by h one is the best i mean h0 by h as close to one that will be best that will be best right okay let's see we'll look into it just we'll have a break for a break.